Um, thanks for the invitation to present. Um, I've put together a series of screenshots to give me something to talk to. I actually um, just got back from holiday after three days of flight delays and cancellations. So uh, bear with me while we go through this. So I've put together a bunch of links for um, where the content has come from on this. So those will be available. So don't feel like you need to try and grab them from the screen as we go through. So they're all there collated. And what I'm going to go through is some of the background and context and the need for the vocabularies, uh, the parameter usage vocabularies and ontology, NetCDF LD, uh, NetCDF linked data, and linking it all together. So eReefs is a program that's been going for like 12 years now, I think. Um, and it's a four dimensional, well, a foundational part of it is a four dimensional model of the Great Barrier Reef, uh, hydrodynamic modeling, uh, biogeochemical modeling. There's a lot of remote sensing work done, uh, in situ observations. So there's enormous body of research, uh, data sets, uh, all kinds of things there. And Part of um, making this data available uh, is a visualization portal that we use, and that's backed by a data brokering layer API, which has a Swagger interface for application use. And this sort of brings together a lot of data sets to make them accessible to people. So this visualization portal uh, has a data browser in it which uses this data brokering um, software that we've developed, which regularly goes away and scans a bunch of uh, data services for data sets and creates a cache of metadata. So where we want to get to is that these data sets are sort of open, accessible, findable, and that like human readable. So the, when people are looking for things, they don't necessarily need to know your you know, strange encoding that uh, perhaps the, the modelers have used in the underlying data sets. So if people are looking for chlorophyll data sets, they don't necessarily need to be searching for CHLA or CHL something, and they'll still be able to find those things. So when we're browsing for data sets, yields a whole bunch of data sets from different sources. And amongst those, we've got this a particular data set here, which is a uh, biogeochemical uh, model result. And within that data set, it has uh, a whole lot of variables. And through this interface, this sort of user interface, we get some of that metadata that's been cached about sort of labels and descriptions, temporal and spatial information, but that to the side. Behind the scenes, the actual sort of structured metadata that's been cached, we can sort of go and look at that. And we've got this metadata result here. And within that, we've got temporal uh, and information, spatial information, units, variables, and information to where the actual data set is coming from. So just going to yeah, talk to the sort of the underlying data set for this particular one. So Threads is a piece of software for a data service for NetCDF data. Um, I'm not sure how familiar people are with NetCDF, but it is a multi-dimensional structured data format that is uh, quite common with atmospheric and oceanographic modelers. So it provides, it's built on the hierarchical data format, I think it is HDF, and it provides yeah, multi-dimensional, multi-variable. Um, it has sort of headers in it, lots of metadata, and this threads application is a way to uh, provide web services to that. And we get this kind of 
web view of that underlying data set. So this particular data set has a dizzying, dizzying array of 356 variables. And these are the variable names that are in the data set. Um, so not necessarily uh, user friendly. So this is one of the sort of main drivers for needing vocabularies to try and make all of these variables accessible and describe things and provide extra context about like those variables and units and, and where what they are in relation to one another um, and to be able to leverage some hierarchies to say like, okay, well, this variable, it's actually not just chlorophyll, but it's related to nutrients and it's within the context of the ocean and it's, and it's something that's been modeled versus something that's been observed, that sort of thing. So recently we've, um, been moving towards using the parameter usage vocabulary from the British Oceanographic um, Data Centre. And this parameter usage vocabulary has this semantic model of a property of an object in relation to a matrix by a method. Uh, it has some variations on this as well, but that's the core sort of model for it. So each of those elements are uh, come from vocabularies and then that whole thing on its own also forms a vocabulary term and this is a bit more detail on that model sort of showing all of the vocabularies so everything we're seeing there with the s0 1 2 3 to 26 are all these separate vocabularies that are all being linked together with this uh, conceptual model to derive singular terms for describing everything. So my understanding um, is that originally the PUV vocabulary, they had the approach of saying, okay, well, we're gonna combine multiple vocabularies to create terms as required and the actual sort of structure behind that they were capturing uh, this sort of broader and related terms the PUV ontology uh, extends on that to say well let's keep that relationship and um, have a structured way of describing that so that rather than just saying we have these broader um, things in terms of the matrix and the object and the parameter, let's um, explicitly say what those relationships are between those vocabularies within the term. So rather than just saying um, that we have a, so um, sorry, we've got a P01 term which is the total chlorophyll in the ocean calculated by a model and underlying that it just has a broader relationship to water bodies what we do is in the PUV ontology it explicitly says of the relationship between this term and water bodies that it's the matrix that it's within hopefully I'm getting that across so to marry the vocabulary terms to our data sets, we need a structured way to um, describe it within the metadata of our data sets and a repeatable way that people and applications understand how to interpret uh, and resolve things. And so that's where NetCDFLD comes in. Um, and that is a, as it says here, um, an approach for using linked data descriptions in the metadata of the NetCDF files. So what that looks like is within the NetCDF model output files, we'll have a header which provides this context for uh, like the PUV prefix. And then within a variable, uh, we have a P01 
PUV double underscore units of measure. And then that will resolve to describe something. And then that variable also has um, a term associated with it. So PUV double underscore UOM following the NetCDF LD conventions resolves to this URL. And then when an application follows that URL, it will reveal its label to say, oh, PUV double underscore UOM means scale or unit of measure. So the link data allows us to sort of follow these conventions. Uh, it allows this the underlying things to be extended uh, and have descriptions on things to say, OK, well, these units of measure have a constraint on them to say that they sh should come from this list of vocabularies. And, and then you can put in things like quality assurance and quality control checking of whether things are following those standards and rules. So the for this unit of measure, we've got a, a URI there for that one, and that resolves through to the um, BODC vocabulary server, and that reveals a label of degrees east for that. Uh, and then we have all this extra context about alternative labels, um, whether it's a current um, definition or if it's been replaced by another one uh, and other related terms to it. So this is this is the uh, human readable interface. It has a bunch of different formats that are available um, using JSON LD, RDF, Turtle. So going down to another variable within this data set, um, I'm looking at the chlorophyll one there, which is CHL underscore A sum, which is total chlorophyll that's been modeled. So we have their PUV parameter, and there's a URI for that. And the process that we went through, because that didn't exist um, within the vocabularies, was we undertook a contract with Botsy and uh, they undertook to create terms for us. And the mechanism that we used for that was just in public on GitHub, um, where they would create issues to discuss things. And they create an issue like this, and then we were able to just sort of sit back and allow conversation between the, the Botsy team and our modelers um, to sort of tease out what the term was, what it was actually describing, uh, and then the BOTC team could actually create that term for us, and then that would feed back, and the modelers would use those terms within their model output files. So for that chlorophyll one, this is where we ended up with a, um, a labeled term that, uh, comes from that URI and it has some broader and related terms. So at the moment, what I was sort of flailing around trying to describe earlier, the PUV vocabulary understands that there's these broader and related things, but the PUV ontology is about making it more explicit okay, about what is that relationship rather than simply broader. It's about saying, oh, it's the, the water body here isn't just a broader term, it's it's the matrix that this parameter has been measured in. Um, and the thing that's been measured is concentration and the thing that that measurement is of is chlorophyll A. So getting much more explicit like with that, and then we can be provide a sort of richer metadata interface and search interface um, to these items just by link following through the linked information for these terms. And this will go through to the search interface as well. So um, I don't want to part way through implementation of it, but conceptually where we'll get is if somebody searches for water body, they're going to get results for all of these things like this concentration of chlorophyll because 
there's this relationship between all these terms. So by integrating vocabularies and linked data, then you get this sort of rich graph where we can search through things and make these things uh, findable and accessible. Yeah, that was the, the search interface I was talking about. So yeah, at the moment, searching through our um, visualization portal for chlorophyll yields 294 results. And the, you know, the intent is that regardless of whether that word chlorophyll term is actually in the label or the description of a data set, if we've got that link term from the vocabulary um, and that has a relationship to chlorophyll, then it should be findable through here. So that was about everything I wanted to go through. Um, just wanted to acknowledge all the efforts of the CSIRO team involved and BODSI and the fact that we're st really standing on the shoulders of the all the work that's previously been done on linked data and ontologies and vocabularies. Um, and yeah, thanks very much for your time.